And these are the stats between the two former Penn State teammates, Miles Sanders of the Eagles and Saquon Barkley of the Giants. And the bottom line there, Miles Sanders, 1,068 rushing yards on the season. And he is the first Eagles 1,000-yard rusher since LaShawn McCoy in 2014. Yes, sir. Uh, 2014. Yeah. That's saying something. And this, was one, this wasn't even close. Barkley was questionable before the game. He ended up obviously being a go. But look at eight and a half yards per carry. And at the end of the first quarter, I think Miles Sanders had about 2.8 yards per carry, which shows you what he did in quarters two and three in particular. He opened it up. Also, he's opening up the bank for some team, hopefully the <laughs> Eagles. What happens? He's going to be a free agent after this season. There's coaches that we've had around here that if Miles was like three carries for six yards in the first quarter, he's not getting the ball again. This kind of goes to show you that if you keep feeding him, he's going he's gonna to make you pay for it. And uh, I, I give Shane and Nick so much credit for the way they've managed him. Uh, I think his whole career he's been managed well. He hasn't been overused. Like, you look at Saquon, kind of looks like a shot fighter the last month or so. Um, you know, he had a 35-carry game, a 31-carry game this year. Uh, Miles never has that. Has to worry about that. Man, par partly because this team's so balanced. But uh, I love the way he's running the ball. Uh, I hope they can re-sign him because he's. Tell you what, he's a special player. It's kind of interesting the, the play calling, play selection, because we all ask the question: What sets up the offense best? Does the running game set up the pass game? Does the pass game set up the running game? I think today was an example where the pass game set up the running game. Because you said we, we, Miles stalled in that first quarter. All of a sudden, the pass game was working, moving the ball. All of a sudden, they start dropping people back in the secondary. He's, he's in gashing runs. Yeah. You said it before the game. You said throw to build a lead and then run to run, keep run, it. Run to keep and it. that yeah. works for this team. Sure does. Although we, we were talking about it at halftime. They had that, what, 14-play drive. Three of them were runs. The rest passes. The second play was a run, a four-yard Miles Sanders run. And I thought, all right, maybe that sets up, the, as you suggested, the passing game for the rest of that drive, if not the game, right? The B word. The, yeah, balance. 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 Yeah, balance. Hard to stop. Mm -hmm. Hard to stop. What? What happens to Mike is one hell of a play call. Yeah. What happens with Miles Sanders after this season, the way this is going? <clears throat> this is just an under... <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> it's not negative. I'm saying the guy's great. How what is he going to do? How Jeffers is that negative? Money. They're good. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This is an undervalued <laughs> position, though. You know, it's, it's not like back when I played where you had running backs that made money back then. The, the, the Emmitt Smiths, you know, the Ricky Waters. We didn't have... We didn't have to worry about paying the backs. Backs made all the money at the time. Re yeah. Receivers didn't make any money. Now it's Swiss. Now receivers make the money. And running backs are not a commodity they look to that they want to pay now. And and you look at guys, guys like Saquon Barkley, uh, Ezekiel Elliott. You know they've shown a pattern of getting hurt. Even King Henry getting hurt. So they don't value it as much. Um, I, I think Miles Sanders understands the expectations of what people are seeing as far as running backs and what the market is for him. I think the Eagles will be competitive. Want them to stay. But there's a lot of people that have to pay first in order to, you know, say we're going to sign him. Not back. that many. Not that many. I think he's going to be a priority for Howie this offseason. And the thing is, it's not like, like Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I mean, he's going to get $15 million a year from somebody. But running backs don't make what safeties make. Yeah. And yeah. I think something like $6 million a year could do it for Miles. And I think that makes him easier to keep because those positions. The, you the think he'll paid. get that much? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gosh, wow. you guys are being so negative talking about who that uh, was. Six months. Well, see, that's not right. I think the going rate's like, what, five? Four and a half to five for, for, uh, for backs these days? Yeah. Yes. Hey, can hardly get by in five because or six million now. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Poorhouse. Uh, living in a poorhouse for that much. Let's you know? go to Mr. Positivity yeah. at the podium. Here's Nick Sirianni and a big win. Nick, uh, you, guys, you guys clinched the playoffs about today. I know you have goals bigger than the playoffs. What's it mean to clinch? Yeah, you know, actually, they said that to me in there. I'm like, oh, that's that's nice. I mean, it's yeah, we got we got way bigger goals, and it's on to the next one. So, um, uh, it's nice to get this win here because uh, we know this is a good football team. Uh, it's nice to come out here and play good on the road, and, and and we'll move on to the next one. Enjoy this one for a little bit, and move on to the next one. What's it like putting up this type of performance after a rough game here last season? Yeah, you know, I, I don't think we think through that. Like, we don't think about that, la like, what happened last year. I mean, this is a whole new team. This is a whole new coaching staff on their side. This is, this is a two different teams playing. So that really, it just feels good to go out there and, and, and perform uh, offense, defense, and special teams, uh, you know, to really well and, uh, and beat a good football team out there. And so 
Uh, that we're, that's not in our mind. Again, when we when you think about when we talk about dog mentality, it is literally learn from your mistakes, but move on from your mistakes. And that and that mistake happened a long time ago, and with a different team, with a different different group of guys, and and we're on to this year, and we're, we'll we'll learn from the mistakes we made in this game. We'll learn from the things that we did well in this game, and and try to take that on to our next game. Nick, did you get Miles Sanders a game ball? Like how important was it for him to have this kind of performance in this game? Yeah, not, there's only a couple times I've given game balls after a game. If, if, what do you have? 100? What do you have? 144? 144. Yeah, he'll get a game ball. All right, so you just Miles, you'll get a game ball. He knows he'll know he knows he'll already get one of those, and so uh, he'll get one from that, and uh, it's good. I mean, first first time he's went over a thousand. He's been great all year. Um, he's ran the ball hard. He's protected his butt off. He's protected the football, um, and he's just playing really good football right now. Just the fact that he's healthier this year has been a difference. Yeah. You see a difference? I think I see his play improving too. You know, he's he's always, we've always been able to count on Miles, and we know we, we know he missed some time uh, last year with some some injuries with the uh, with the ankle, but it is it's it's both and right. It's it's that he's out he's been out there every single game, and we, he's improving as a player, and that's our goal as a team is how do we get better every single day as a team? How do we get better every every single day as an individual? And Miles is a is a great example of that because he's improved his game not only running the football but all those other things that I just talked about. And what do you think, like early those first few drives? They're both long, they're both sustained. What do you think clicked early on? Yeah, it's not easy sustaining drives th that long in this league. But, you know, we, we were really good on third down in some, some third down areas. Um, you know, we we put it in our players' hands to go for it on fourth down in, in one of those areas. And, and Devontae and, and uh, Jalen went out and made a big-time play. So it was being able to convert on in third down scenarios and, and be able to keep the sticks uh, moving and again it was Jalen was I felt like Jalen was just in complete control there's a there's a play that he hits miles on the on the sideline on a check down where he didn't force anything the, the defense dictated where the ball went he took it to miles and we got eight yards off of that which I thought was an awesome play um, and he was just in complete control there so it was it was the conversions on third down and it was also the just really good quarterback play by Jalen this is well, the first 12-win game. It's the first 12-win season of your career, and, and a, a lot of teams you've been a part of had to fall into the postseason. So, what does it say that it's not that significant to you? That, that? It, it's, <laughs> you know, I I, I talked, you, you know, asked, Elliot asked the question about me and getting the playoffs. I guess that is nice that you don't have to sit there and wait uh, to see, um, hey, am I getting in? But we know our goals are, are higher. We want to win the division, and um, and that, that takes one game at a time uh, because we know that the Cowboys are playing really really good football. And so yeah, it's nice. that's that's a nice part of it. You don't have to sit there and say, who's this team playing and who's that team playing. You just handle your own business, and uh, we'll, hopefully I'll just I'll do that from here on out this instead of waiting. stretch of recent games from Jalen, I mean, what can you say about the level he's playing at? Yeah, really high level. Um, really high level. Um, you guys have seen it. He's playing really good, and and we're in the team. I, th I mean, last f three games we've scored. Has it been 40, 44? And I don't know if one of them wasn't 40, but last week was 35. Um, but that's that's good quarterback play. It's good offensive line play. It's good tight end play. That's good receiver play. It's good running back play. It's good quarterback play. And he touches the ball every time. So that's it's big time play by him. Our offensive line's just done a great job. I think the. The tight ends have really stepped up. It was really nice to see those guys. They blocked their butts off today, and then they also made plays when it when it came to them uh, in the passing game. And so uh, that was really good to see. Everybody's stepping up. Quez has stepped up, and and you know you got it. You got an injury to Dallas Goddard. It, it takes everybody, and uh, and and they've and they've accomplished that. You all feel off the beaten track, and it's a while after the game. Watching you on the sidelines, you're very emotional. Have you always been? This kind of emotional <laughs> guy on the sidelines. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I definitely think so. Um, uh, you know, there's a there's a picture that I love of my dad um, yelling. I don't know who he's yelling at, but 1978, I think the picture was taken. He's got these plaid pa pants on. That was the style then. He's coaching. He's got his headset kind of ripped off, and, and he's got these. Uh, he's kind of got. I don't know if he had a Fu Manchu or if he just had big lamb chops of, of sideburns off to get the picture for you. But and he's he's going crazy and uh, and it being emotional. This is an emotional game, um, and so. Um, it's it's fun to be able to, to to go out there and show your emotion and and get excited when you need to get excited, get mad when you need to get mad, but then be able to move on and play the play the next play. So I blame that on my dad. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I've always I think I've always been emotional and, and football. 
I think it's a little easier to be emotional because you got 40 seconds to the next play until you're, you, you got, you know, Shane's calling the play. I can do what I need to do and then, and then get myself back in the mode. Or I know I had a, I had a big time issue in basketball. If I turned it over, I'd be there. I, I'd had a hard time with that because the turnover is so quick. But uh, yeah, I think that's always how I've been. And uh, yeah. On both sides, couple of the more ball. Folks? On both sides of the ball, do you feel like you all are in the beginning stages of starting to play your best football, or are you coming into January and all that? It's a process, and you want to be able to continue to to elevate as the season goes on, and so. You know, hopefully you're starting to play your best football around this time. I think that we got really good players on this team. We got really good coaches on this team, and we're we're we've we've shown these last three weeks, three weeks that we keep getting better, and that's just got to be the 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 goal here. And that's how we that's how we go about our our goals uh, during the week. We want to make sure we're meeting with high high detail. We want to make sure we're walking through full speed to the snap, and we want to make sure we have high high intensity at practice because that's the that's to us what how you get better when you when it's it's monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday when you're getting better and then you're able to go out there and perform so you know uh, you know hopefully we continue to do that um and i know we got the right uh, leaders on this team and the right guys on this team that understand the importance of that and we'll go back to work uh, we'll enjoy this one go back to work tomorrow and uh and uh see if we can get better next week one more question rate of kept going if uh he, if this were competitive, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to get more information. I, I usually come here to talk to you guys, and then I get to talk to the doctors, and then uh, I'll figure a little bit more out. So I, I'm not. I'm not quite sure quite yet. After the sit boss injury, what was the sideline like scrambling to make a plan there? Yeah, I don't know if scramble is the right word. Uh, you know, because I think I, I know Coach Clay and Coach Panunzio and Coach Brown were, all, were on top of it. Unfortunately, you practice those things, and you hope they don't have to come to uh, fruition. But you, you practice them, and you get ready for them, just like. If God forbid something happened to the quarterback, you did you do the same thing there, and so you have backups. You have to, you know, with the the roster the sizes the way they are, you have to ha be ready for that. And so it was just, hey, we might not like what's going on right here, but here's the plan. Here's Covey, you go to holder. Jake, you go to punter, and we'll, let's get through this, and let's 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 make sure we're on top of it everywhere else, right? Snap, Rick, you got to be great with the snap to Covey, and and Jake, you got to be great with your operation because it's just a little different. And Rick in the in the punt team, you got to be great with your your operation right here um, when we go punt. And so the guys did a nice job of that. So it, I don't think it was a scramble because of how much preparation uh, goes into each and everything. And Coach Clay uh, deserves a lot of credit for that. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, everybody. Nick Sirianni talking about the mishap on the punt that uh, eventually saw Aaron Sipos injured and leaving the game on a cart. We'll see what happens. And by the way, uh, Sirianni does not come out ready to go with the injury updates as, as uh, a la Andy Reid. He said, I talk to you guys, then I go find out what the injuries are, and then we'll find out, I guess, tomorrow. Uh, unless you're Reuben Frank, he'll find out a little bit later on. He knows what the injuries <laughs> are. But, I mean, you can find punters. Uh, hopefully, blanket ships okay. That's a scary one because they don't have a lot of depth. You saw Kayvon struggling out there. Again. Yeah.